It's been a long, long time in the making, but Washington, D.C. finally has a baseball team going to the World Series for the first time since 1933, to be precise. Now, we are based here in Washington, so we're not going to pretend there isn't just a little hometown pride in this story. There definitely is. But William Brangham is here now to look at the Nats' unlikely run to the Fall Classic and the good vibes around this region. To do it, Robles will squeeze it, and there it is! It was the most thrilling night for baseball fans in the nation's capital in 86 years. There will be a World Series in D.C. The Washington Nationals squeaked into the 2019 playoffs as a wild card team. Fly, fly, base hit to right. After a come-from-behind win over the Milwaukee Brewers, they took down the heavily favored Los Angeles Dodgers before sweeping the St. Louis Cardinals on their way to the World Series. This result was almost unthinkable just five months ago when the Nats were slumped in second to last place at the bottom of the National League. Manager Dave Martinez. If you look at how um, where we came from and what we had to accomplish to get here, I mean, uh, it wasn't easy. And, uh, you know, I, I'm... I'll be the first to say, you know, I never doubted these guys. I really didn't. But baseball fans in Washington, D.C. have had their hearts broken many a time, dating back to baseball's earliest days in the capital. The last time a D.C. team won the World Series, 1924. Calvin Coolidge was president. There used to be an expression which was uh, first in war, first in peace, and last in the American League to describe Washington. Fred Fromer is the author of You Gotta Have Heart, A History of Washington Baseball. Long before they were the Nationals, D.C.'s team was the Senators. But after years of mediocrity, they left for Minnesota in 1961. The really sad thing for Washingtonians was that team, as bad as it was, was about to turn the corner. When they got to Minnesota, they were, became a really good team. They won a pennant within a few years. Washington got saddled with an expansion team, also called the Senators. They were terrible because they had to start over from scratch. Eleven years later, that team also left D.C., and for 33 long years, there was no professional baseball in the district. But in 2005, the Montreal Expos moved to Washington and became the Nationals. After 15 up-and-down seasons, this team's success came as a surprise to many, especially after they lost superstar Bryce Harper to Philadelphia in the offseason. Let's go Nets! But now they've managed to rally longtime residents and new fans alike. I feel like I've seen over time, like, the city kind of come around to baseball because it wasn't that way from day one when they were here, like, what, 11, 12 years ago. People greet each other when they see you in the jerseys, when they know you're going to the game and you're talking all the way in, sit at a bar, have a couple drinks and still talk, go in the game, still talking. It's just a whole different atmosphere. And in a town best known for the sport of politics, the Nats have managed to climb above the fray. Baseball has brought unity, not separation. When we're in that stadium, you're a Republican, I'm a Democrat, whatever it is, that doesn't count. What counts is that we're rooting for the Nats. Longtime political columnist Al Hunt, who's also the husband of a certain NewsHour anchor, has followed D.C. baseball for decades. You know, it's a dark time in Washington now, but when I first came to this town, Watergate, Vietnam, it was just as dark. And one of the few escapes, one of the few things that kind of united parts of the community was the Washington Redskins. The Redskins now are dysfunctional and really disgraced. The Washington Nationals now are serving that same purpose. The Nationals will take on either the Houston Astros or New York Yankees in the World Series starting next week. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham in Washington, D.C.